Let's go to Ruth. Ruth, the uh, first chapter, the 8th through the 18th verse. The, I'll read this. Then Naomi said to her two daughters, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud. Do you see that? They wept aloud. Because sometimes goodbye hurts. And said to her, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband, even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons. Would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this, they wept aloud again. Kissed their mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you and to turn back from you. Where you go, I'm going to go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me. Be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. I want you to look at somebody square in the face and tell them the topic of our preaching presentation today. Tell them this. Say, say hey, I'm staying. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> I'm staying. Now, I know that most of you who come to this church, you only watch TBN and the Word Network. So you're not going to get this reference. Just ignore this part because you won't get this part. And I am telling you, I'm not going. See, y'all didn't get that. So I, I knew y'all weren't going to get that part. So, um, you know, to the sinful, I had to come down. I'm not, I'm not where y'all are in the seraphim and cherubim. So just for those, the children who don't speak in tongues first before they speak in English second, let me just give a little breakdown of that little line. Jennifer Holliday and Jennifer Hudson blew us away with the portrayal of Effie in this little Broadway show called Dream Girls. Y'all don't know what Broadway is because all y'all watch is TBN and the Word Network, but if you would just give me a little time to introduce this subject. There was this beautiful line that won Jennifer Holiday a Tony Award. You're gonna love Come to the altar. I was doing that as a test to see how many sinners we had in the room. The altar is open for you. It be the front row people that know all of Drake's songs. I don't know. But that woman said, I'm staying. In a world that's always leaving. You know what I've been praying for you about this week? I've been praying for God to give you staying power. Because if you do any research, even on education systems, if you do any research on the longevity of people going to work, you will see that we used to have a day where people would say, I worked here for 20 years. There used to be a time where it was boastful to say, I've been a member of the same church all of my life. There used to be a time where it wasn't amazing for you to have been married for more than five years. But nowadays, I need a church to talk back to me. This is not Joe Osteen's church. I need to hear somebody say amen. Nowadays, it's a miracle if you're together for two years. You're like, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. When somebody finds out that you've been working at your job for five years, you become the veteran. Am I talking to anybody in the room? It's amazing how many people applaud your inability to stay. 
We're in a world now where it is not unusual for you to have five wives or four jobs, three calling birds, two French hens, and a partridge in a pear tree. I'm going to get one of y'all to figure it out at one point or another. And I have been praying. When I got on this plane this morning, I said, Lord, I don't want a recycled word. I don't want a word I preached before. I want you to give me something fresh. And I feel like God said he wants somebody in this room to know I am applauding your ability to stay even when you have permission to leave. That might not be for everybody, but if it's for you, I want you to open your mouth and say, yes, Lord. He says, Sean, tell them I saw them stay in the middle of betrayal. I saw them stay in the middle of rejection. I saw them stay even though they were talked about. I saw them stay even though the person that they call friend was actually their Judas. And I want to applaud them because they stayed even though they had permission to leave. You read the text message. You saw the evidence, and y'all judging them, but some of us are just one screenshot away from elimination on our job. Do I have any people that know it's nothing but the mercy of God, nothing but the grace of God that is still allowing me to serve in the capacity? Because if you don't know, let me tell you, I ain't always been like this. So I just feel like somebody needed to hear this, that God is applauding your stay even when you have permission to leave. We have scripture to corroborate that. Acts 16, we hear this wonderful sermon. I, I preach it a lot and everybody gets excited. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. I memorized this scripture verse because on the Fred Hammond CD, that girl grabbed that mic and she told that story so well. I wanted to read it for myself at midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them such that the foundations of the prison doors were shaken and everyone's bands were loose. All we really want you to know tonight is if you find yourself in a midnight hour and if you have it, maybe you will. There are two key things that will guarantee your success. Number one, pray. Why? The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous avail as much. So when you get off your knees, if you believe you're able to do exceeding, abundant, above all that you can ask or think. I thought Acts said there are two things you got to do. I literally opened up Acts 16. She preached it so well. I was looking for it. Number one, pray. Why? <laughs> but what? Y'all remember that, right? And after that, they had, bless, bless. Y'all remember that? Bless. I right, don't sing it because we're going gonna, gonna to get distracted. <laughs> Stop, y'all. Clap it up for these musicians. That, that means y'all been in church longer than 20 years. But y'all, it don't say at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And when you get off your knees, it says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. The prisoners heard them. The foundations of the prison doors were shaken and everyone's bands were loose. Here's the crazy thing, Donche. Prisoners got free and nobody left. Because praise has the power to break chains off of people who didn't ask to be free. If you get this, you'll stop inviting your child to church and you'll start praising at the house because if your praise really has power, Praise has the power to break chains off of your son, even if he ain't in church today. Do I have any people in the room? I need a mother in this room. I need a real mother in this room to start praising God for your baby. Because it's nothing like the sound of a mama's praise that will get heaven's attention. And he'll get free without his permission. I got Bible. I got Bible. I'm not talking about stories. I got Bible. Praise has the power to break chains. Don't make me run. I got my Jordans on. I didn't wear my Stacey Adams today just in case y'all felt like running. Marcel, the Bible doesn't say that the prisoners, now listen, if I was in jail, I don't know about y'all, but the very moment that Paul was like, I'd be like, amen, y'all have a blessed night. I'd have been out of there like, yo, come get me in the black Escalade. Make sure the light's off. Praise has the power to break chains off people and ask to be free. The crazy thing about this is that the prison guard, upon realizing that everybody was free, thought to himself, this is my last day. Go to Acts 16, read it for yourself. He grabs a sword to kill himself, and Paul and Silas says, no, don't do it. We're still here. Because it takes maturity to stay 
even when you got permission to leave. It's been maturity. It hasn't been your ability to forgive them. The truth of the matter is you still ain't really forgave them. But it is maturity because you know that just a couple years ago you were in the same position of the person that you got to forgive right now. And now you are saying to yourself, God, if you did it for me, then maybe you're going to give me the power to do it for them. If I got people in this room that know what I'm talking about, say yes, Lord. He told me, Elder, that he is promoting you not because you praised. He's promoting you not because you gave. He's promoting you because you stayed. Even when you had permission to leave. When I look at this text with Ruth, I got some questions. I got some questions because if you know anything about the story of Naomi and Ruth, I feel like the more I read it, the more I realize that Naomi is a lot like me. How is Naomi like me? Because I got this little issue called self sabotage where I pray for God to bring people into my life and then I push them away I don't know if I can be real I'm trying to figure out who I can be real with yeah. if you're not going to judge me but I ask God for the blessing and then I push them away because it reminds me of what happened before and when I am triggered by the trauma of a memory that happened before I start treating the promised land like it was Egypt I start treating the new situation like it was the old situation. And you know how I know I got self-sabotaging tendencies? Because you ain't going to hang up on me. Let me tell you something. I got the gift of goodbye. If I sense that you take two seconds to breathe, I'm like, all right, talk to you later. Because I have a problem with people hanging up on me, and I need them. So what do I want to do? I want to control it so that I don't act like I need you. And when you act like you don't need them, you tell a person that was going to stay to leave and they believe you. And when you go to God and you say, I'm upset that these people left, God is like, but you asked them to stay and then told them to leave. Is this heavy? Is this, is this talking to y'all right here? Self-sabotage will make you confuse the fact that Orpah and Ruth wanted to stay. The Bible says, we ain't going to read it again. The Bible says that both of these women went to this woman of God and said, we don't want to part from you. But the reason that self-sabotage lingers the way it does is because you keep assuming that everybody loves you because of a transaction. You keep assuming that when they show up in your life, it's because of something that you're going to give them. Can I tell you that in this season, God wants to give you a you? Y'all missed it. I said, can, can I tell you, God wants to give you a you. You know how you stay up all night praying for somebody else? God's about to give you a you. I'm almost done with my sermon. You know how you will give your last even when you don't have it? God's about to give you a you. You know how you will pay Peter, rob Paul, go into this account, go into that account, use one dollar to get gas, and then find some other money right here. You know what you did with that money that came from COVID? God wants to give you a you, but you keep sabotaging the you you prayed for and I wish I had a counseling session with Naomi I wish I'd have been able to tell her Marcel you pray for this you pray that God would give you people that can be trusted even when the thing y'all were there for died you keep thinking that they were like the people who left you last season I'm not talking about Naomi no more I'm talking about you you got trust issues. You got trust issues because you really don't believe that God hears your prayers. Let me tell you something. This is not in my notes, but I feel it prophetically. I want you to say it out loud. Say it for me, y'all. The person who hurt you is not the God who healed you. That's point number one. The person who hurt you is not the God who healed you. Point number two, the church who hurt you is not the God who healed you. You'd be surprised by how many people go from church to church and never join because of hurt from something that happened at the first church. That's not even in existence anymore. 
The covenant that hurts you is not the covenant that wants you. But sometimes God will give you a new day in your marriage and you'll still act like God didn't turn the page. And so if I was writing a letter to Naomi, I would say, uh, Naomi, they want to stay because they love you. They stay because they love you. Do I have any mamas in the room like real mothers? Like mothers, like mothers, mothers. Like, like you don't need Mother's Day. You forget it's Mother's Day. That's how much of a mother you are. You're like, mothers, please. This is what I do. I can't compare to a mother's love, but I can tell you my story about my daughter. My daughter cannot have soda. That is one of the rules that we keep. She cannot have soda. She cannot have candy. The only people who give her candy, my mother. I'm exposing all grandmothers. In this moment, you need to come to the altar and repent because the parents are trying to establish some rules. And every time I look at my daughter, she gobbling up some Laffy Taffy's. Who gave it to you? My mother. What am I do? Put my mother on punishment? So I, we got this rule. She can have no soda. That's the rule. But last year, Anna started letting her have ginger ale. <laughs> So do y'all know the only thing she likes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner is ginger ale. Acting like a 90-year-old woman talking about some, can I get some ginger ale? Hold the ice. So the other day, Dashe, I got these small capsules of ginger ale in the, because I don't want her to overwhelm herself. So they're like small, bite-sized ginger ale. I turn my back to watch TV. This girl gets a red cup, gets two ginger ales. Pause it in. Don't y'all be laughing at my daughter. Pause it in and starts walking like this. Whenever your child walking like this, they doing something wrong. Telling on themselves. I said to her, what you doing? Nothing. I said, and I just won. Okay. Went to her room. An hour later, I came back to her room. I saw six cans of ginger ale all in her room. And you would have thought my daughter had stolen money from the bank. I walked in as the father that I am. And I said, Zanai, I told you one ginger ale. She said, I know, Daddy. I said, why did you have six? She said, I'm sorry, Daddy. I said, man, why she looked like me? (laughs) She said, I'm sorry. I mean, it's so cute. Like, the lip is popped out and all of that. I'm like, you know what, baby? Clean up that ginger ale. She said, okay, two seconds later, what did I find myself doing? Cleaning up the mess she created. I I went in the room to scold her. I left the room cleaning up the mess she created. I was picking up the ginger ale, telling her, baby, I told you one, but I love you too much because it's only ginger ale. It's not that serious. It's, it's only ginger ale. And I want to liberate somebody in this room who's been beating themselves up for a sin God already forgave you for. You're beating yourself up for a struggle that God already forgave you for. And he's telling you, Naomi, it's only ginger ale. The people that are in your life, they don't want you just for what you have. Do you see how Naomi was so caught up in what she believed they wanted her for? That even when they said, I don't want a husband, I don't want a man, I don't want to get married again. She said, no, I'm going to push you back because there's a bitterness that will make you believe that you're unlovable. And so today I'm done. I want to pray for every Naomi. I want to pray for every Naomi who has been, who has found themselves in this sermon. You might not be 80, you might not be 70, but you have self-sabotaged some things. I want you to actually start believing that the God who forgave you can also forgive them. I want you to believe that the thing you prayed for last season, you're going to see it show up in this season. And can I be honest with you? It takes seven wrong brothers until David shows up. It takes picking the wrong person. But the oil's not going to flow where it does not belong. And can I tell you as a David, as a person that is uncomfortable with auditioning as a person that knows he's anointed but is afraid to interview. Can I tell you, stay in the sheeps. 
Stay in the garden. Stay in the valley. Stay right in your letters because I prophesy to you that whatever is for you, it's going to wait for you. You don't need to sleep your way to the top. I need a witness in the room. You don't need to barter your way to the bottom. You don't need to slide 55 business cards. If you are David, the thing that God anointed you for, it's going to find you. You don't have to beg. You don't have to plead. You don't have to ask. God knows what's in your bank account. Just trust him. Do I have any Davids in this room that God is talking to right now? I'm finding you. I'm finding you. I'm finding you. And I don't care how many people get the job. They won't keep it until you show up. I don't care how many people get the house. They won't stay there until you show up because there's an anointing on you. And I'll keep my promises to you. I saw you. Glory. So today... The word of the Lord is, I'm staying. This is a rough season, but I'm staying. I need to know if there are any people in this room that can come to this altar real quick for a 60 second prayer. But as you come, you saying, whatever this is, I'm staying. For some people coming up, it's your marriage, I'm staying. For some people coming up, it's the ministry, I'm staying. For some people, it's your job, I'm staying. I don't like it, but I'm staying. I am committing again to stay. I don't know what your stay is, I don't know what your area is, but you know what it is, and I want you to testify with your feet. God, even though I lost a lot, even though the things died, even though I cried, even though it hurt me, even though I'm struggling, even though I don't like it, even though I caught it, even though I'm bothered, even though I'm mad, even though I'm pissed off. I'm staying. I'm, I'm staying. I don't like it, but I'm staying. You know why? Because you went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me, and they hung you high, and you could have called the angels to come down, but you decided to stay. You, you decided to stay for me, so the little I can do is stay on this little job. The, the least I can do is stay in this little relationship. The least I can do is stay, even though it bothers me. I want somebody to open your mouth and declare to the Lord, Lord, I'm staying. Come on, open your mouth. Lord, I'm staying. I'm staying. And you're going to love me. I'm not leaving you. I know you want me to leave. I'm staying. I know you owe me money. I'm staying. I know it. I know what they did to you. I'm staying. You're not going to be able to walk away from this. I'm staying. And I feel this. I feel this. I feel this. A lot of times when we hear this sermon, we think about relationships, love relationships. But I heard the Lord Ebony just say that there are some friends that you have that have hurt you. And the Lord says, after this sermon, you're going to call them and you're going to tell them, even though I'm staying. I don't know who those friends are. There are some friends that are afraid. They've been avoiding you. They've been trying their best because they know what they did. They don't know if you know. And God says that there are some people you need to call and you need to tell them, listen, there's nothing that you could do that would cause me to leave you in this season because God equipped me to stay. Lift your hands. The Lord says, I'm giving you the grace to stay. I'm giving you staying power. Rollins, I'm giving you stay in power. I'm giving you stay in power. Darrell, I'm giving you stay in power. I'm giving you stay in power. I'm giving it to you. I'm transfusing you with staying power. This is not even your power. You won't even understand it. But it is supernatural strength to stay, even though you have permission to leave. It's a true word. It's a mature word. But I tell you, let me tell you something I know about God. When God gives you supernatural strength, you don't feel the pain the same way. It doesn't mean you won't sting every once in a while, but the pain won't be there. Can I speak to that person? There's been unfaithfulness in that relationship. There's been proven infidelity. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm taking the sting away so that you can stay. In worship, the Lord says, I'm going to give you the transfusion of healing so that it won't hurt as much as it did before. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know why? Because you ain't always been that perfect. 
you learn forgiveness by being in that situation. And I'm giving you the power to stay because I didn't leave you. Now, because I am a mature man of God, pause the music for just a moment, just bring it down. I need to make sure I'm balanced. I am not saying stay in violent, physically abusive, emotionally abusive relationships, situationships, friendships. For that person where your life is in danger, this does not apply to you. I would be irresponsible if I did not say that. And I think you already know that. But to the person that's hearing this, God does not abuse. So God will never ask you to stay in an abusive situation. But some of this stuff is not abusive. You have self-sabotaged because of abuse that God has already healed you from. You know, if you have been hit, every hit feels like the hit that hurt the most. Even when it was a protective, I want to make sure you don't jump out in the middle of the road because you're my child. When you are associated with trauma, can I just say this? When you have had a traumatic past, sometimes the rod and the staff don't feel like comfort and you call it abuse. There's a love that will reach out to grab you so you don't get hurt but there is not a such thing as a love that hurts did y'all hear what I just said Chira you are enough Chira you are enough yes Lord so Father today I thank you for this word that you gave us we know that you were talking to us about something specific. And each of us know what that thing is. So God, extend staying power. Make it a little bit easier. You told us in Matthew to come to you, all of us who labor and are heavy laden, and you'll give us rest. You told us to take your yoke upon you and learn, for you are meek and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So for today, I pray an exchange of the yoke. I pray supernatural strength. I pray wisdom. I pray boundaries. Because forgiveness doesn't always mean reconciliation. I pray God for wisdom and boundaries. So that I do not continue to subject myself to somebody else's poor decisions. I pray for balance, and wherever someone has an individual stipulation, I pray that your spirit will speak louder than my words. In the name of Jesus, and for that person that is watching online, or their friend tagged them, or they're watching this and they don't know you, there's no safety outside of Christ. I pray that they find permanent safety in the arms of a Savior. And we're going to just whisper this, assuming that somebody in this room may need to connect. Everybody say this with me, Lord. Lord. I am a sinner. I need, I need you to save my life. To save my life. I, believe that Jesus came I believe that Jesus came to obliterate sin, to obliterate sin. So, I can become so I can become the righteousness of God. Righteousness I confess with my mouth, I, with my I, believe, mouth. In I believe in my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, and, Jesus was from the dead. and I am saved. And I, am saved. I, am I am forgiven. I am changed. I am changed. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for having me today.